I am so super excited to have you with me, Alisa. And even before we started recording, we already were starting like to dive deep. I was like, we got to start recording because this is too good <laughs> not to share it. And so thank you so much for making the time and, and being here today with us. I'm so happy to be connected with you and to support your community in any way that I can. Thank you. And one of the things that we started to talk that I feel that really bounds us together, we are both true believers in empowering women and helping them to create a fulfilling life. So yeah. I wonder, why does it matter to you? Like, why do you care for other women to live a fulfilling life? Why not just, you know, like living a good life, but why do you care about it to be fulfilling? It's, you know, it's a good question. And I love women and it feels important to support women in rising together to heal some of the unconscious wounding that we've been programmed with. But I also love working with men as well. There's just something right now that feels important for women to come together and show each other what's possible. For me, I am, I'm the youngest of, I have two older brothers and I've always been this, like, I can do it. I can catch up. I can be strong. And so there's a little bit of you know, my personality in terms of like wanting to prove that, that I can do it and other women can do it. But really the deeper, the deeper calling I would say is just that I love service. I love helping people. And it's the most selfish thing that I could do is to help other people because I'm fulfilled by it. Right. And we talk about fulfillment. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. It's like when I'm living in alignment with my values, I feel fulfilled. And one of my values is service and connection. And so when I have those aligned in my business or in my romantic life, I feel happy. I feel good. Mm, that's amazing. And I really love that you said that you love showing other women or people what is possible mm -hmm. because I feel like so very often in the past, me inclusive, I was comparing myself. I look at other women. I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have her we all husband. Do it. <laughs> I wish I would have her body. I wish I like I would have her house. And you look and you start to feel like bad inside. Yeah. But would I have changed the last year when I look at someone who is living a life that I really admire? I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. So she can do it. I can do That's it. Right. That's right. And it's That's a different mindset. Yes. That's right. And what a gift to you to have that. I noticed with, say, jealousy or envy, it essentially, if I slowed it down, what I realized what it means is that I, have, I want something that they have, but I have a belief that I can't have it. Hmm. So if I question the belief I can't, then it's, I'm inspired to, and get, have feedback about what it is I desire. Hmm, that's amazing. So I love that, that mindset shift. It's like, oh yeah, they have it and I can do it too versus they have it and I can't do it. That's actually the can't mindset is what takes us out of it and then creates comparison and separation and lack. Mm. So I wonder, how can you, Alyssa, shift from that place of I cannot have it? Because I think it goes back to do deserving. I don't deserve it. You know, it's everybody else can have it, but not me. How do you change that? I would say at the heart of my work, both with women around leadership and people around relationships, those are the two specialties that I focus on. It's about self-worth, the heart of it. I think any of our limitations comes back to who we think we are. And the set point, there's upper limits and lower limits. We have this comfort zone around who we think we are and what we think we're capable of or what we can receive into our lives. And so for me, a real grounded practice is to question who I take myself to be and the limiting stories that I buy into. Mm. And when we start to do, for me, I have a spiritual foundation to the work that I do. And if, if it's not, I, if they're not identified with a thought, a behavior, or an emotion, I know myself beyond labels. Mm. And then there's no limitation. There's because you're beyond that. And so it's just a simple, you know, I, I hear people say you deserve it or you're worth it. And that has the best of intentions, but it's limiting because your deservability has nothing to do with anything external. Mm. You are inherently priceless mm -hmm. at your very core. And so when we have that shift and even sometimes just changing some of the languaging and not saying you deserve that then, or buying into it ourselves, sometimes people say, you know, I don't want to put myself out there or market myself, things like that in a very practical way. It creates this limitation inside of us. So sometimes watching our language, but also 
having a spiritual practice helps us wake up to who we are beyond any of these limiting ideas. Yeah. Limiting ideas. Mm -hmm. That's that point. So what are the spiritual practices that if you like can keep only like one or two Yes, and you cannot do nothing else, just this one, which one would you do? For me, my two core are meditation and inquiry, questioning who I take myself to be, questioning the limiting beliefs that arise in my mind. I am not my thoughts. I am what sees the thought. Mm -hmm. And having a just very simple grounded daily practice or regular practice of meditation can help keep that, keep spaciousness between who I am and then the thoughts that come and go. Mm. Hmm, I love that. And I love that, uh, that questioning. So um, do you go like deeper with that questions? Who am I taking myself to be? Because mm -hmm. if you write down something once, you know, I take myself like um, woman empowerment coach, or yeah. I take myself like mom or whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yes. how do you make sure that that's the core? Yeah, because I think it's helpful to see that those are roles and those roles change. Our personality changes over time. Our bodies change. Our thoughts, the emotions change. It's not the totality of who and what we are. And for me, the more I am engaged in my business, the deeper my spiritual practice needs to be. Mm -hmm. And so I would do a lot of silent retreats. I'll take time away to unplug. Um, but it's really just a moment to moment tuning into who I take myself to be. One simple exercise that people can do is write down, and actually I have a guided meditation on YouTube called Who Am I, which experientially brings you into an experience of taking off the labels and coming back home to yourself. Mm -hmm. But one thing that people can do is to say, I am a woman, I am at this age, I have this job, I have this partner and don't have a partner, and then question each one of those. And it's just a stillness practice, but it's a habit of thinking to take ourselves, we pretend to take ourselves to be someone. And that's just the ego looking for security and safety. But there's so much freedom beyond any labels. And ironically, we are more bold in our businesses as a result. And we are more loving and present in our relationships and more fulfilled as a result. Hmm. The ego is looking for security. So it, it tries to latch onto being someone, something. Mm. And it's innocent, but we can compassionately see through those beliefs and experience more freedom and fulfillment. That's incredible because I think that no matter who you are and what stage of your life you are, you're always seeking for that freedom and fulfillment because anyone you will ask, like, what do you want? Well, most people really want to be happy. Yeah. And they turn out for the things because they think the things will make them happy. That's right. You know, That's right. like they live in the when land. When That's I get right. this, I'll be happy when I get this. So it's really incredible that you are turning into the spiritual practice because that's something that no one can take away from you. That's right. That's right. No one can take that away. And it can seem like it's clouded, but if somebody feels like they're clouded and they're like, what are they talking about? Something grounded that we can ask ourselves is, can I absolutely know that the happiness or the fulfillment isn't already here before I go looking for it? Hmm. Because I never heard the, that question before. Because it's the nature of seeking that creates that gap between where we are and where we want to go, which creates that space of not being fulfilled. And mm. it can be beautiful to follow our desires without getting lost in the idea that it will make us become something better or it will be more, more in the future. That's the habit that creates dissatisfaction, comparison, and separation. Mm -hmm. But just to ask yourself, can I absolutely know that the happiness that I think the goal or the guy or the whatever will give me, can I absolutely know that it's not already here before I go looking for it? Mm, that's amazing already here. I love it. Because that's the thing. Like uh, Once you are on a spiritual and personal development path, there is this feeling that you always have to do more. Yeah. You know, yeah. like read more books, go to more seminars, you know, and, and, and I'm big like advocate of a growth. However, mm -hmm. how can you keep growing Alisa without feeling the need? I am not enough. I yeah. have to still be becoming more. This is such a good question. You're answer, you're asking such good questions. You know, for a long time, the core story for me was, and I think the core story of any ego, if we really go down back to the root of it, is I'm not good enough. 
or just this lack mentality, not enough, not enough time, not enough money, I'm not enough, all the ways the mind looks for proving that to be accurate in our world. And that's just a habit of thinking. And so for me, having those inquiry practices or those meditation practice, I remember even, you can even put in the meditation, you can use that not enough quality and put it into your meditation practice. So it's like, I wanna be more enlightened, more clear, more inspired, you know, and, and it's like, I had to really look at where was I coming from when I would do these practices? Because it doesn't really matter the what, it's why I'm doing it, where I'm coming from. Am I looking for more enlightenment, more clarity, or, you know, you can, any goal, relationship, yeah. financial, enlightenment, whatever it may be. Or is it from, from the meditation practice inquiry was like, can I just use this t- time to just be and break that habit of looking for more? And before I go looking for it again, just asking these questions, is it not already here? And then without the desire, without this idea of a future, peace, pleasure, aliveness, mm. satisfaction. And so having those simple practices helps us come back to what's already here that, that we often overlook and it's so simple. Mm. And yet if, we, if we're nurturing our mindset to be on Instagram and comparing or looking for the guy or the whatever the external thing is to validate our worth, it will never be enough. Mm. And for me, my own journey was this, uh, this core story of not good enough really um, became an, an opportunity to awaken to who I was, to wake up beyond the story of not good enough and good enough. Because as soon as the story of not good enough comes on, the other pendulum swings and it's I'm better than in another situation. And neither are true. Who you are is bigger than any label, any idea of who you take yourself to be. Mm, that's incredible. And it's, it's so amazing because I, I got to keep smiling because you said it really doesn't matter the what, what really matters is the why. Mm-hmm. And I just posted a podcast about it last week. I love forget, it. Yeah. Forget, I love how, it. forget the what, it's about the why. It truly really yeah. is. Because even though like, let's say we are so into our personal development and spiritual practices and meditation, if you're using meditation like an escape because you mm-hmm. feel that you're not mm-hmm. good enough person if you don't meditate, well, then is the wrong reason why you are doing it. But if you go into it without the expectation, with just being there in that moment, then you are already accomplished. That's right. That's right. A hundred percent. And that's where the satisfaction comes from. And that's what we want the goal anyway. That's what we want it for. Mm -hmm. And it's already here. So how do you embrace the now? Because let's say, for example, you're at the job that you don't love, you know, Mm -hmm. you don't have the love of your life. You are not feeling that you matter, that you are not living your purpose. Mm -hmm. How can you love what is Mm -hmm. if you don't (laughs) yeah there's 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 like the there's the personality tools and perspectives that I can share and it's a lot of the work that I do with women around tuning into that and then there's the deeper context of there is a love that's already here that allows everything to be as it is and when we're not lost in our stories we can experience that and so inquiry, meditation, those things help us open to that love that's already here. Sometimes we're so in it that we can't see it and we can't feel it. And so if we're in that experience, the opportunity then is to start questioning the beliefs that help us open the aperture and or move through the emotions. So something that's really practical and grounded that they can do is you can work it on the mental emotional or physical levels. So mentally, I like inquiry. I really like questioning the beliefs. But oftentimes it's, it can be really emotionally dragging. And so for that kind of an experience, ironically, actually just feeling and surrendering to the feeling of not feeling good enough without identifying with that opens us to our fullness, opens us to our wholeness. It's the last place that we would have looked. But if we really breathe into the sensations and allow that feeling to come up without identifying with it, it often just needs a few moments and it, tr- and it moves through and and it integrates into our nervous system. Mm, so I'm licensed as a somatic psychotherapist. I use some of that work in the leadership work that I do, but it's really for me about integrating both. Because anytime we take steps towards creating what we want, all the unconscious stuff that's held us back will come up. And a lot of people run at that point. And really those are the stepping stones to help you get to where you want to go. 
And if we have the right tools, we can move through them with more grace and create sustainable change. Mm. That's important, the sustainable change, because very yeah. often we find something that makes us feel better now, but it's not sustainable. You yeah. know, it, yeah. it's like giving away the food, you know, or you have a glass of wine and okay, I feel good now. Okay, <laughs> I can feel like being on a wine 24-7, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's almost like the the postponing it just postpones things for us to look mm -hmm. at later. And everything is simply looking to be met with love. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I love it. Forms coming from the place of love instead of fear and judgment. Yeah. So you said this one is the mental. So what were the other two? The mental was, it was inquiry. Mm -hmm. The physical was somatic. So breathing into the sensations in your body, oftentimes it's the throat, the heart, or the belly. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the process that I teach coaches. I teach other people, but um, so the mental is inquiry. The physical is breathing into the somatic sensations in the body, allowing it. Often it doesn't need that much time to integrate back in if we're not identifying with it. And then emotionally really giving expression to that part of us, allowing that part of us to come up and really mothering that part mm, that's because beautiful. that's all it's looking for. And then it's really, a, it's like a little kid. It doesn't need to take long. You give this little child a hug that's needing it and it's off playing again. But the misunderstanding is if I judge it, if I avoid it, then I will, then I can move through it. But like you're talking about, that's the temporary versus actually just taking a few moments to experiment with what happens when I allow it to be here. Hmm. If I, without an agenda, just to fully drop in and allow it, uh, it, when when you really experiment for the self, you find out that it moves on. Yeah, and it's amazing. Like you said, it's like the little child. And sometimes we are trying to like put it inside, bury it, or like put it under the carpet. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm not talking about it. So it's going to get better. But like a little kid, if you don't pay attention, what does it do? It screams That's right. louder. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It needs more attention later, right? It's, it's just a postponing. And it's, if avoiding worked, I would be all in for it. It just doesn't work. And so having the courage just to have, be uncomfortable for a moment, because without the thoughts about a feeling, and it's just raw sensation in the body, it moves on. But if we keep thinking a thought into existence, then it, it perpetuates itself. It becomes a behavior, a belief system and a behavior. Hmm. When we nip it in the bud and we just drop the story, feel it, and not identify with it, it moves through. Hmm, we open the back of our heart. I think a lot of women close, and it's just being willing to open your heart to your closed heart and just let it move through, open the back of your heart, and it moves on. Mm, that's then, that's incredible first time when i did my reiki session like a couple of years ago the lady she was like oh my gosh your heart is so close i was like what are you talking about <laughs> so true you know yeah. very often we're trying to protect ourselves keep yeah. our heart close so yeah. we don't get hurt again however when we close it gets even worse it gets yeah. heavier and it gets even more painful so open it and let it flow it's it's truly healing yeah. Open your heart to your closed heart. Cause you know, sometimes the heart closes and it's innocent and totally okay. And we can be that loving presence for the part that feels scared as we're taking risks in relationships or taking risks in our business. And actually when we source directly, rather than looking for the world to give us something, we learn how to give that to ourselves. We are so much more empowered and no one can take that away. And that's a deeper level of security. I love that. I love that because I think that we all like to have this feeling of security and unfortunately we try to achieve it with the things or money, yeah, you know, yeah. but if you can create this deeper feeling of security in yourself, mm -hmm. nobody can take it away from you from the inside. And that's the most precious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. And then we, and then as we give it to ourselves, it helps us open to and, and recognize that there is a security in the moment beyond what we're thinking. Hmm that it's already here. We've just got temporarily taken over by a, a negative, fearful belief and missed it and closed the aperture on it mm. versus just like, oh, when I offer that to myself, it helps me relax into the security of the moment. But we're looking for security in the future, which it will never be there, right? Mm. Yes, yes. No, it, it's not because you always take yourself with you. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, you always take yourself with you. So uh, let me ask you, Alisa, one last question. Yeah. For someone who is right now in a place in their life, they know they have a closed heart because they were so hurt in the past. What would be something that you would suggest to them to do what they can do right now today? 
to open again, to trust again, to find that peace. Mm. I would encourage them to listen to their closed heart, to ask it, what does it need from you? Or what is it looking for from the world? And then find out what those specific things are and begin to breathe into and offer it to that part of you directly and see what happens. Mm, that's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to be testing it tonight. So good, good. <laughs> I can let know the audience. I love and, and actually, so I used to be a couples therapist. I don't know if you knew that. And there's a really powerful quiz if people want it. It's a love quiz and it's free. Wow. It's on my website, but it essentially, it takes 15 minutes and it helps you understand what you're unconsciously attracted to in relationship so that you can well, you can avoid that and you can heal it within yourself directly. If you have a conscious partnership, you can work together to heal it. And if you are by yourself, if you're single, then you can, you can either do it with a coach, a therapist, or on your own and start to change those dynamics. But one of the things that I think is really important is to know from childhood, oftentimes these things start when we're around six or eight, what were the behaviors that you did to avoid love? because you're probably still doing similar ones. And once you identify them, then we have the courage to experiment. What happens if I don't close my heart? What happens if I don't run away or go shopping or overeat? What happens when I just breathe into 30 more seconds of staying here? Or if I'm one of those people that really gets loud with my needs, what happens when I sim it down and I really soothe myself and stay present in that conversation without getting louder? You know, And you would get to experiment and start finding ways to stay connected to people that you love and really do the deeper healing work. Because that's, that's what, what we really want is on the other side of fear. And if we have ways to cope through it and more self-awareness, it's easier to walk that path. Mm, that's amazing and i will make sure to include that link and uh, not just to your website but also to this quiz and i will yeah. also find a meditation uh, who am i because yeah. i think that's absolutely those tools are like life-changing i life know it so i will definitely put it in the show notes is there any other place you want people to find you well, actually, I'm doing a, an event for women. It's called Success and Soul Live at the end of January. And I have a mastermind group at the end of February for women who are really ready to rise together and do the transformational work, as well as the strategic work. I take some of the, the work that I did as a psychotherapist, as well as a leadership coach, and this is really having an incubation to go for the thing that feels most alive and important to them. So those are two offerings that feel like they can really serve women at this time. And I would mm. be happy to support them and talk with them about that. That's amazing. Absolutely. If you want to like send me the links later so sure. I can include them and I'll just launch this episode faster. So we make sure that it's before <laughs> the heavens are gone. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alyssa. I truly appreciate you and I love the work you are creating. It's so exciting to be watching you. So thank you so much. Such an honor to connect with you. Thank you for the work you're doing in the world. <laughs>